guys, it's Josie Woese and it's story time. Today we're going to be reading Disney Frozen 2. I love this story. Hope you can see it and you can buy this book so you can read along with me. Here we go. Long ago, an enchanted forest full of magical spirits thrived in the far north. There, they lived in harmony with the group of nomadic people called the Northaldra. When the Kingdom of Arendelle was established, the Northaldra seemed to welcome them. As a way to express his gratitude, King Runyard, the leader of Arendelle, built a dam to connect the Northaldra land to Arendelle and to celebrate peace between the two people. But what was meant to be a celebration turned into a terrible battle. The fighting angered the spirits and they turned against both the Arendellians and the Northaldra. However, someone managed to save the prince. A haunting cry echoed throughout the forest and the spirits fell silent. Prince Agnar was returned to Arendelle where he became king. An impenetrable mist rose up around the forest, trapping those left inside forever. King Agnar finished his story, Anna and Elsa hanging on his every word. The young princess's minds bubbled with questions. Were the Northaldra magical like me? Elsa asked. Who attacks people who give them gifts? Anna questioned, but their parents didn't have the answers. Their mother, Queen Adina, soothed them to sleep with a lullaby about a special river called Atahalan, said to hold the answers about the past. Do you think Atahalan knows why I have powers? asked Elsa. If Atahalan is out there, I imagine it knows that and much more, answered the Queen. Someone should really try and find it, Elsa said, closing her eyes. Aduna's smile was bittersweet as she slipped out of the room. Anna soon awoke and ran to the window. She looked outside before calling to Elsa. The sky's awake, so I'm awake. We have to play. Many years had passed since then, and though their parents were gone, Anna and Elsa were incredibly close and always watched out for each other. Olaf had learned to read. Philosophy was his favourite subject, and Kristoff had bought an engagement ring. He was ready to take the next step with Anna, and Sven fully approved. One thing the group always made time for was family game night. It was the boys' turn to pair up, and Kristoff was right with every guess. Unicorn, ice cream, Oaken, Elsa. Sven hit the bell as time ran out. But Anna struggled to guess what Elsa was acting out, and she knew something was bothering her. Are you okay? she asked. Just tired, said Elsa, forcing a smile. Good night, she added, as she abruptly left and went to her room. The truth was, something was bothering Elsa. A voice had been calling to her, trying to draw her away from the kingdom. It seemed as though no one else could hear it. Moments later, Anna appeared at Elsa's door. You're wearing mother's scarf, she said. You do that when something's wrong. Elsa didn't want to worry Anna, but Anna always had a way of make making Elsa feel better. What would I do without you? Elsa asked. You'll always have me, Anna responded. Then she sang their mother's lullaby. Elsa drifted off to sleep and Anna quickly followed, dreaming beside her sister. Later that night, Elsa awoke to the sound of the mysterious voice calling to her once again. She couldn't help feeling curious. Did the voice belong to someone magical like me? As Elsa walked down to the fjord, she sang in response to the voice. Tentatively, she used her magic, tossing snow into the air. Images she had never seen before blossomed from her fingertips and surrounded her. The forest, a reindeer, a little girl. Fascinated by the imagery she had created, 
Elsa blasted out her magic and an enormous shockwave swept across the fjord with a boom. The moisture in the sky froze into small crystals that hung suspended in the air. Elsa was in awe of what she had done. The deafening sound startled Anna awoke and she raced to the balcony searching for Elsa. As the sisters' eyes met, a blinding blast of light came from the north and the crystals dropped to the ground in a cascade. Elsa raced towards the village. As the crystals fell, Arendelle was transformed. Water stopped flowing, fire vanished, the wind kicked up, pushing villagers out of their homes and the ground rippled like the sea. Everyone moved to the safety of the cliffs above Arendelle. Once there, Elsa told Anna about the voice. What kind of voice? Anna asked. What did they say? Elsa explained that the voice hadn't said anything. It had simply showed her the enchanted forest. Elsa knew she needed to travel there. The ground rumbled again, but this time it was the mountain trolls. Grand Pabby went straight to Elsa. Both of them could feel that the spirits of nature were angry. Much about the past is not what it seems, Pabby said. When one can see no future, all one can do is the next right thing. To do that, Elsa knew she needed to find the voice. And this time, Anna, I am not afraid, she said. Grand Pabby told Anna that he wouldn't take care of that he would take care of the villagers, but she needed to watch over Elsa. I won't let anything happen to her, Anna promised. At dawn, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf and Sven joined Elsa and they began their journey north. They passed many places that they had seen before and continued even further into the unknown. Olaf ceaselessly chatted as they travelled. Since he had learned to read, Olaf had been full of fun facts and he felt that their trip was the perfect excuse to share them all. Did you know that water has memory? Olaf asked. Did you know men are six times more likely to be struck by lightning? Sorry, Kristoff. As the night came to an end, Elsa asked Kristoff to stop the sleigh. I hear the voice, she said. Up ahead was a vast wall of glittering mist. Elsa ran straight towards it. The others were not far behind her. As they neared the mist, Kristoff raised his hand and touched it. The group watched as his hand sprang back towards him. Olaf made a run for it and bounced off it like he was hitting a balloon. He giggled and did it over and over again. Elsa reached for Anna's hand, drawing on her sister's strength. Slowly, the mist parted before them. We do this together, okay? Anna said. Together, Elsa said. I promise. The mist continued to roll back, revealing four stone monoliths. As they passed the pillars, the mist closed behind Elsa, Anna and their friends, trapping them inside. The sparkling colours in the mist shifted and aligned and something about the mist changed. Instead of bouncing them off when they touched it, it now pushed them. Suddenly, they were propelled free of the mist and into a clearing. What was that? Kristoff asked. Olaf touched the mist they had just emerged from. It had become bouncy once again. Well, it let us in, but it clearly doesn't want to let us out, Kristoff said. Bright side, the forest is beautiful, Elsa said. With the soft rays of the sun illuminating the forest, it was like walking through a dream. The group slowed their pace, staggering by the forest, staggered by the forest's beauty. The little snowman was distracted, happily exploring until he realized he was alone. As Olaf anxiously looked around for his friends, the beautiful forest started to feel scary. The wind spirit swept Olaf up at the very same time his friends found him. The strength of the current broke him apart, twirling his pieces around and around. As everyone tried to help, they got swept up in the windstorm too. 
Elsa used his, her magic to stop a branch from slamming into Anna, which caused the wind spirit to push everyone but Elsa out of its grasp. Desperately, Elsa threw a steady stream of snow towards the center of the vortex. The wind swirled tighter around Elsa until, finally, she opened her arms, blasting out her powers. Snow filled the air and froze into beautiful ice sculptures. Each one appeared to represent a moment in time. Water has memory, Olaf said, explaining how ice could reveal the past. One of the sculptures immediately captured the sister's attention. Young Prince Agnar cradled in the arms of a girl. They heard noises coming from the bushes. Anna broke off an ice sword from one of Elsa's sculptures and sliced open the greenery, revealing reindeer and people. Before they could react, some people dropped down from the trees. Then soldiers appeared. It was the trapped Northaldra and Arendellians from King Agnar's story. The two sides, still at odds after so many years, ignored Elsa, Anna and their group, and immediately began arguing. The leader of the Northaldra, Ilana, bickered with the Arendellians' lieutenant, Matthias over who could claim the group as their prisoners. Anna, thinking she recognized Matthias, stepped forward still holding the ice sword. Feeling threatened, both the Northaldra and the Arendellians rushed towards them. Elsa used her powers, shocking everyone and sending them to the ground. That was magic! Did you see that? Matthias said. Of course I saw it, Yolana responded. Explains the ice sculptures, said Ryder a young Northaldra. When Olaf greeted him, Ryder smiled, adding, and the talking snowman. Matthias got to his feet. Anna was staring at him, still trying to figure out where she knew him from. Finally, she blurted out, library, second portrait on the left. You were our father's official guard. Matthias was overjoyed to hear that their father was King Agnar, and he had made it back to Arendelle. Elena burst forward, wanting to know what sorcery the girls had used to come through the mist. Anna explained that Elsa had been born with magic. Did you know that your grandfather, your king, despised magic? Elena asked. He only feared how people like you could exploit it, Matthias responded. The spirits turned against you for your actions. You were trapped here too, Elena shouted back. Suddenly, a bright flash appeared. Fire spirit, Elena yelled. A ball of fire dashed around the trees, sending it up in flames. Chaos erupted as it blazed a trail through the forest, burning everything in, in its path. Elsa raced behind it, using her magic to try to stop it from spreading. When she finally chased it down, she saw that the fire spirit was actually a small salamander. Looking deep into the fire spirit's eyes, Elsa understood its feelings of pain and fear. She gently held out her hand and it scampered onto her palm. As she helped it find calm, the flames died. When Anna reached Elsa, the sisters embraced. She Elsa pulled out her mother's scarf and wrapped it around Anna, knowing it would comfort her. Ryder and his sister, Honey Marin, were intrigued by it. Elsa explained that it had been a gift from their father to their mother. It had been one of her most cherished possessions. Recognising the symbols on the scarf, Ryder took the sisters back to the ice sculptures Elsa had created. Elsa compared their mother's scarf to the one the young girl was wearing. They were identical. The girl who had saved their father had been Northaldra. The two opposing sides were bewildered by the discovery of the sacrifice one enemy had made for another. Suddenly, their differences, anger and suspicions melted away. The forest animals called out and the Northaldra each laid their hands on the shoulders of the person in front of them, softly beginning to sing. Kristoff showed Ryder the engagement ring he had gotten for Anna. 
Ryder offered to help. The North Alder have the most amazing way of proposing, he whispered. If we start now, it can be ready by dawn. Meanwhile, Matthias shared with Anna some wisdom that, that he had learned from his father. Just when you think you've found your way, life will throw you onto a new path. Anna knew what came after that. A person just needed to do the next right thing. Over by the campfire, Honey Marin showed Elsa the spirits of nature symbolized on the scarf. Elsa was surprised to discover there was a fifth spirit called the bridge. It was said to connect the magic of nature to humans and it disappeared when people stopped listening. Some of the elders claimed they had heard it crying out the day the forest fell. Moments later, the ground began to quake. Earth giants had appeared, shaking the ground with each stride. Everyone hid, but the giants seemed to sense where Elsa was. Elsa quickly threw her powers into the night sky, tricking the earth giants and sending them lumbering in another direction. Elena turned to Elsa. They sense you. They came here for you, she said. I could feel them, beneath their rage, wanting help, Elsa said. She turned to Anna. We're going now. I'm not waiting anymore. I need to find that voice. Elsa grabbed her things and, with Olaf following, started to head north. Where are Kristoff and Sven? Anna asked Elena, but the Northaldra woman didn't know. Holding back tears, Anna asked Elena to let Kristoff know that she had to leave with her sister. Elena found Kristoff in a clearing. It had been elaborately decorated for a special occasion like a proposal. But Kristoff stopped everything when he saw she wasn't Anna. Elena explained that Anna had gone with Elsa, headed north. Then Elena left him alone with his thoughts. Kristoff couldn't leave Anna, couldn't believe Anna had left without him. He walked through the forest, trying to sort out his feelings and wondering whether he truly fit into Anna's future. Elsa, led Anna and Olaf north as she followed the mysterious voice. Soon, they were looking down at an old Arendellian shipwreck, its tattered flag waving sadly in the wind. Anna and Elsa gasped at the sight, realizing it was their parents' ship. They ran down to take a closer look. After searching the ship, they found a map that proved their parents had been trying to reach Atahalan. Using her magic, Elsa pulled moisture from the old ship and created images of their parents' journey. As the wind spirit swept past each one, voices from the past echoed, revealing even more information. Their parents had been in search of Atahalan, seeking answers about Elsa's magic when the waves overcame them. Elsa ran from the ship. This is my fault, she said near tears. Anna insisted she wasn't responsible for the voices, choices of their parents and reminded Elsa of her important quest. Once again, Anna had revived her sister's confidence. Elsa vowed to make it across the dark sea and find Atahalan, but she had to do it alone. Suddenly, Elsa magically created a boat under Anna and Olaf and sent them zipping down a path of ice. Anna scrambled, trying to stop their progress, but then the boat dropped down a slope into a river, carrying Anna and Olaf away. Anna and Olaf were both angry with Elsa for sending them off. But when Anna realized Olaf was frightened, she calmed down. Hey, 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 I'm not ever going to leave you, Olaf. Not ever, she said. Olaf brightened. Pinky swear, he said holding out a twig pinky. Pinky swear, said Anna, hurling her finger around his. Then Anna saw something that made her quickly try to quiet Olaf. Don't shush me, Olaf said. That's rude and... The little snowman's voice dropped to a whisper when he saw the river was surrounded by sleeping earth giants. They're huge. 
Elsa had finally reached the north and stood at the edge of the dark sea. She narrowed her eyes as she looked with determination past the mountain waves to the other side. Taking a deep breath, she sprinted onto the sea, creating snowflakes at her feet. But the strength of the waves quickly knocked her down. Elsa pulled herself back to the shore and leapt onto a nearby boulder. As a wave came towards her, she froze it and used it as a slide. But the next wave broke the slide and she dove into the water. She had no time to notice the enormous creature watching her. Deep beneath the dark waves, a lightning flash illuminated the water knock. The water spirit swam up to Elsa and looked her in the eye before disappearing in the next lightning strike. Elsa pulled herself to the top of the water. The creature surfaced and rammed the ice, breaking it and tossing Elsa back into the water. The two battled both above and under the sea. Elsa used her magic to make an ice bridle. She grabbed the reins and swung onto the water knocks back. At first it bucked, but soon she was riding it to the opposite shore. Once safely across the dark sea, Elsa removed the bridle from the water knock. She had reached Atahalan. The mysterious voice quieted and for the first time in her life, she felt completely at ease. The journey had changed her, freed her. She had no doubt that the enchanted forest and all the people trapped inside would soon be free too. Peace and harmony were finally going to be restored to the unbalanced land. Across the sea, in the lost caverns, a rush of wind sent a flurry of snowflakes inside. As Anna and Olaf watched, an ice sculpture began to take form. They were relieved. This meant that Elsa had made it across the dark sea. Anna looked closely at the ice sculpture and she immediately knew why Elsa had sent it as a message. It explained what had happened in the forest. She wondered how she could correct all the wrongs of the past. Then Anna remembered the advice given to her by both Grandpappy and Matthias. Do the next right thing. And with that, Anna took a step forward. Her journey was far from over. But Anna knew that she could rely on her friends. Well, that's the end of this book, but it's not the end of the story. To find out what happens, make sure you watch the movie Frozen 2. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I'm Josie Weiss. See you next time.